Some major rebranding for Games Workshop today. Games Workshop and Forge World have both been consolidated into one single new Warhammer web store. And while it definitely seems like it has some positives, there are some teething issues, and a lot of people aren't particularly happy with the way that the new site works. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about Games Workshop's new web store, which does look like it brings a bit of a shake-up to the way that most people are going to buy Warhammer, though I must admit in the short term it probably looks like a bit of a downgrade, barring a few key functions. Today Games Workshop's standard GW web store went down for a fair bit, and then at around about 3 or 4pm-ish UK time it's come back online, and is now redirecting to warhammer.com. It's perhaps not enormously surprising that this was going to happen at some stage. I believe it was announced earlier in the year that they were redoing their web store and have been investing really quite a lot to make their customer portal work, apparently around about £5 million or US$6 million US dollars roughly, so really quite a big investment there. Apparently one of the main aims for the update was to make the site a lot more mobile friendly, as it could be a little bit of a pain to navigate their current web store on devices. The redesigning it from the ground up does allow them to add a few more features and things, a few of which might genuinely help people out a bit, but it maybe does feel like it's perhaps seen one step forward and two steps back, as just from playing around from the side and seeing some early takes on how it works, in general the initial reaction for this just really hasn't been all that great. Quite apart from online portals or anything going on like that, I feel like actually the biggest news of this update is Games Workshop's branding. They've been slowly rebranding themselves from being known as Games Workshop to their customers to being known as Warhammer, and that's been going on for literally over a decade now. Gradually their shops on the high street kept on getting rebranded from Games Workshop stores to Warhammer, and then to finally do that with the entire web store itself means that the vast majority of people who are coming to the site are new will know them as Warhammer and not as Games Workshop. It does also seem that the Forge World brand is pretty much going away as well. The Forge World web store is also being completely subsumed into this new Warhammer.com store, and there doesn't appear to be any individual mention of Forge World on their listings there either. I guess maybe that could help simplify their brand a little bit for new people coming to them. It's perhaps just a bit of an odd situation where you have Games Workshop, whose maybe name implies they sell lots of other games, but in reality they are just the people who do Warhammer and Citadel paints and things pretty much. And then maybe it's not the most useful thing to have to get customers to learn that they also have the sister company called Forge World, who's basically under the same umbrella as them and work towards the same things, but make things in a different way and operate independently a bit. Now it's all just called Warhammer, that's the name of the shop, that's the name of the game that you play. I can see why they'd want to do that over the long term. I was certainly kind of interested to take a look at the new site. It looks like at least at the moment they have a queuing system while the web store gets up and running. If you go onto it, it says that you're in the queue and it usually gave me a one minute or less countdown until you could get into it. Placing you on a short holding screen with a few introductory messages and things like that, much as they've done before when they've done really big releases like say the Leviathan box set or others before that. I guess that's probably just a temporary measure as that doesn't seem to be in place at the moment, maybe just while the web store was launching. I guess they'll just reserve that function for really big releases where they think that their servers are in danger of getting overrun. Perhaps the only thing that really struck me about it was the weirdly loud lo notification noise that popped up when it said that it was time that you could go in. I did notice as well that some external links that links to bits of Games Workshop's old web store now seem to be dead, giving you the 404 page not found error, including a few things from Games Workshop's other sites like say the Citadel cover page. Then when you land on the web store you get this screen, looks fairly swish and stylish but also maybe not the most helpful navigation wise I'd say, you basically have a video playing in the background of people doing Warhammer related things. And the two sort of tab things at the top are the shop bit and the start here bit. This initial page that's displayed is technically the start here bit, as if you scroll down there's other bits about guides to start and things, and if you click that start here button it doesn't take you anywhere. On the start here section you can watch that video with the audio if you click on a button on that, and if you scroll down a bit there's a few sections explaining how Warhammer works in general. Taking you through basics like collecting, building and painting, and their associated media like video games and Warhammer Plus and stuff. If you actually want to buy things then you need to select the shop tab at the top, or search something in the search bar. The most major criticism that I've seen most people give to the new web store is that navigation seems actively a bit worse than it was before. Probably at least a little bit of unfamiliarity feeding into that I guess, but I would agree that they seem like they've taken at least some steps back with this compared with their previous web store. I guess it's possible that they could gradually update things over the next few months or year. The main way that you navigate the web store now is clicking on the shop bit and then that pops up basically a hidden menu on the left hand side on the sidebar. 
I feel like having to do an extra click before you can even navigate the basic sections of the store maybe isn't all that helpful. And then you get some of the more standard options, things like Warhammer 40,000, Get Started, and other games if you want to get to, say, Blood Bowl or their other specialist games there. Plus a section of build and paint type things, which has the Sistel things under it, including things like carry cases. If you click on the Warhammer 40,000 section, then it gives you these options in the next menu. A few sections for starters and new releases and things. Then more menus to click through to things like Space Marine Armies, Armies of the Imperium, Chaos and Xenos, and a few other bits like Codexes and Terrain and things. If you do click through to any one of these sections, I feel like that's where one of the bits of clunkiness really manifests itself. Say for example if you click through to Xenos armies and then select Orcs, that just brings you up an entire list of products and basically just takes you out of those menus altogether. You'll be greeted by basically every single Orcs product that Games Workshop sells, and then that menu on the left hand side will have completely closed. If you say you wanted to change your selection to Necrons and you just wanted to see the Necron things, you'd have to go through the entire section again. Click on Shop, then on Warhammer 40k, then on Xenos Armies, then on Necrons. It's not just a quick way to tab back to the last thing without using the back button on your browser. Then say if you wanted to look through the selections for your Necrons or your Orcs, it does look like the web store has lost some pretty significant functionality with the filters that you can put on the armies. Maybe this is something that will return and they'll build in later to update the site, but currently it is a bit lacking. You can't currently filter for, say, both the army type and unit type. So you couldn't, say, select Necrons and select character choices just to bring up the Necron character options that are available from their shop. You need to just literally either search the exact model that you're looking for or search through the entire Necron range and just go through manually with all the miniatures that they sell. There is a unit type filter that's under the rest of the army thing as in the initial thing for Warhammer 40k. But say if you click characters on that one, that will just bring up literally every single character in Warhammer 40k. So that's over 200 plus listings there. And there isn't an option to narrow it down to any one army. So you're equally stuck there with trying to find your Necron character models. I feel like between those two, it's just not very easy for browsing compared with the old version. It did have its interesting way of tick boxy sort of options but that did have its advantages as well. Other things just from generally having a play around with the web store is that really quite a lot of the images and the individual unit listings really feel very big indeed, at least if you're using a laptop or desktop. I guess it might be a positive if you're using devices and things. I just felt like I was probably doing an excessive amount of scrolling and I feel like I could have seen a lot more on the same screen. Maybe that's part of them trying to optimise it more for devices and things as opposed to people on computers and stuff. This in general definitely adds to the clunky feeling of it, particularly with the navigation options. One thing that I'll admit I did like quite a lot though was the search function being improved a bit. It now does seem to be far far better at accounting for near misses or units with other keywords and things. Minor misspellings still seem to bring up the unit that you're looking for, which didn't really used to be the case a lot. You could sometimes just make a unit's keyword just like one character short or something and it would have no idea what you were on about. And that can be a bit of a difficulty with Warhammer miniatures in particular, when a lot of them just have completely made up names or names that are spelled in very weird ways. I guess if you know exactly what you're looking for, then that's a real positive. I thought it would be interesting to see the reaction on Games Workshop socials to the initial release of the site. At least credit to them at the moment, they don't seem to be just blindly filtering out all negative comments, which they have been doing recently in the past. I think it is very helpful to see what other people are struggling with and what things specifically people do and don't like without an arbitrary filter that only allows positive through. Looks like on their announcement Facebook post of it, the top comment that got well over 100 upvotes was that, sorry GW, it was a swing and miss for me. I preferred the old one, and it was easier to navigate if you're switching between game settings and systems. The next person down felt that there was maybe a bit too much emphasis on trying to make the store completely helpful for newer players, which can see why that would be something that they'd want to do. But it's perhaps a bit annoying if you turn up to the site and literally every time you're greeted by the new player thing, despite that probably only being relevant to a fairly small amount of people, as I'm sure the people who visit the web store the most regularly will generally be people who are coming back for repeat purchases and know how Warhammer works. I was interested to see exactly how Forge World was being combined into this new Warhammer.com and it seems that Games Workshop really is trying to make Forge World just not seem particularly different to their standard model offerings. It looks like for the Forge World items on the web store there's now nothing that actually denotes them as Forge World per se. 
The only thing that shows that these are forged world resin models is that they have a 15 plus tag on it, as you're not allowed to sell potentially toxic resin to younger people, I suppose. Under each listing, they've got the tagline expert kit, and I noticed on one of the warning tabs out of each listing, it says avoid breathing in dust as it's harmful. It doesn't look like there's explicitly anything that says that the things on it are Forge World in specific. It means that if you just bring up, say, the Tower Empire range, then you get an equal mix of their plastic kits and their Forge World kits, everything thrown in together. I guess the pricing is the other thing that you can use to differentiate the Forge World kits, though. Just imagine a little bit more on what you'd expect to pay from GW. Combining the web stores, I guess, does have one positive for Forge World. Say if you're ordering some plastic goodies and also a Forge World miniature, you could potentially get the free shipping from the combined offering. Kind of nice that they can all be shipped together as one, as opposed to having to make two different transactions on two different web stores. Maybe having to pay for at least one set of shipping, maybe even two if it's worked out badly. If you click through to the actual product pages, I feel like they look at least fairly stylish. Again, maybe feel just a little bit more optimised towards mobile users as opposed to laptop or computers. You get the big unit picture with some options to cycle to different pictures on the right hand side, the name of the unit or model that you're purchasing, and then some pulled out information with a few bullet points of roughly what they are. The full description text is in the bit below, starting with a funny stylized letter. It feels like it's usable enough, but again, just feels like it's very, very big and you have to do quite a lot of scrolling if you want to see all the information. Plus, I'm not really the biggest fan of the way that the price of the miniature and the buy button follows you down the page and might obscure other things that you're trying to see with it. That one did feel a bit annoying to me. It also looks like, at least in the short term, a whole bunch of the unit images appear to be completely lost in the warp. As you can see for this Necron Hyrotech circle, there do look like there should be a lot more images that you can cycle to to see what the unit's about, but those ones seem to be gone at the moment, and they just have a little placeholder servo skull type image instead. I must admit I probably preferred the old unit listings compared with what they have now, though I guess they're both functional and I'm sure we'll get used to the new version. Though I did notice one other thing that did vaguely annoy me a little bit in that if, say, you've got to the unit that you want and realise that you're set to the wrong locality, say you're set to the EU where you're in the UK or elsewhere in the world, if you change the locality from the unit landing page that you're on, it then kicks you back to the start of the web store again to find the unit that you want once more. It doesn't keep the unit up like it did before. I feel like I'll find that a little bit annoying myself just because I tend to be using that quite a bit for checking different prices in different locations for videos. Otherwise, it does seem that there's a few other teething issues with other functionalities of the web store. Again, looking at Games Workshop social medias, it looks like someone's reported that they're missing any vouchers that they'd uploaded to their account. Someone said that they had £100 worth of vouchers and they'd just completely gone missing, at least temporarily, to which the Warhammer 40k Facebook page did a bit of a sassy, tongue-in-cheek response, which I think can work quite well for some complaints, but when you're talking about missing hundreds of pounds worth of money, that just doesn't really work, as the next person rightly called them out on. Fortunately, it looks like around about 20 minutes, half an hour later, they did get back with an actual response, saying that if you had any credit or vouchers from either GW.com or ForgeWorld.com, they will be migrated across to the account in the next couple of days. I guess that is good to know that you won't just completely lose any money that you had as that would be completely unacceptable. Otherwise, for people who like using their wishlist function on the website, there does seem there's at least a good chance they might have been done away with unless Games Workshop decides to implement them and migrate them again. I couldn't see anything saying that they were working on that though, so I'm not sure how big a priority that is for them. I feel like it was at least a somewhat rarely used feature. But I'm sure for some people who collated the miniatures they most wanted to get, it would be kind of annoying just to have that deleted. Overall, definitely seems like there's a fair few teething issues to the new Warhammer.com website. I'll be interested to hear your feedback and thoughts down in the comments below, of course. And overall, I do feel like it's probably going to cause a bit more harm than it helps, at least in the short term. Though I would argue that there are some positives. A slightly improved search function definitely helps a bit. And combined shipping with GW and Forge World things, I feel like will be useful to some people. Hopefully the navigation won't stay completely as it is, and they'll be able to develop and upgrade that and respond to some of the criticisms. In any case, look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments below. Feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics if you'd like to keep up with Games Workshop's news and updates. I do tend to post new 40k related videos just about every day. And finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, 
and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening and I'll hope to see you guys next time.